Try Dean Novellis back on another Tri State College Basketball Podcast. We're going back to school, and this episode, we're here on the campus of Seton Hall University in South Orange, New Jersey, with none other than Seton Hall University head coach Shaheen Holloway. Shaheen, a lot has changed in this uh, building on this campus since you know over the last year. There's a lot of construction going on. You have a basketball facility that has broke ground. Uh, it's long overdue, let's face it. You know, so, so how excited are you about this and when you walk in here every day to see what will transpire? I'm super excited, right? I think it's something that's very well needed. It's been needed for a while. Um, so I'm excited about that. I think that, you know, the way that college basketball is changing the landscape of, of just college athletics, uh, for us to have a brand new practice facility, I think it's gonna, up, it's a big upgrade. It's gonna uplift the school, not just the athletic department, the whole school. Um, I know my guys are super excited, and as a head coach, I'm excited because I think it's something that's definitely needed and it's going to help. So when you look at this team, uh, everything that I'm reading so far, there have been some healthy bodies, and that was a, a 180 <laughs> from last year when you, you couldn't even field 10 guys out there, you know, yet alone six. So, <laughs> so what has it been like to, to see these guys, how hard they're working, and, and have guys out there uh, who are getting better, stronger, and getting used to you? Um, it's, it's, to be honest, it's good. Uh, like we had a good summer. Uh, we had 10 guys um, that practiced the whole summer or worked out the whole summer. So that's a, like, that's a blessing and that's a plus. Um, you know, right now, school started on the 26th, 28th of mm-hmm. August. Um, we had some guys out you know, with, the, with the bug. It's, it was a bug going around. Uh, you know, I don't know if it was a food bug or whatever, um, sick bug. Um, so some guys getting back into the swing of things. Um, but for the most part, you know, we got 10 guys right now that's, that's healthy, two guys that's coming back from injury. So, you know, for me, it just as long as we can get 10 guys out there that um, kind of know what we're doing and kind of – because we got a lot of work to do. We got nine new guys, right? So we got to put in a lot of stuff with them. Um, so the more reps we get and the more reps they get, the more they get to know me, the more I get to know them, it's good. What do you like that you see from this team so far? Um, I would say this. The first thing first, um, I look at things as a whole, right? Um, you know, this summer, what I loved about this team was the togetherness. Like, we way more together this year than we was last year. And that could be for a number of things, right? Um, I got the job kind of late. It was a war when I would just run around, run around, run around, doing all type of stuff, trying to get guys in here. Um, there was only like four or five guys on the roster. But I got the job, so I had to fill that up. So we never really got a chance to get to know each other. This year we got a chance to get to know each other, you know, on and off the court. And I think that's gonna, you know, pay big dividends, you know, down the line. Because once once you get to know a person, you get to know their likes, their dislikes, what they like, you know, their needs and stuff. And this team has been unbelievable so far to be around. And to me, that's that's kind of it's a, it's a breath of fresh air for me as a coach. Um, so that's the first thing. Uh, second thing is, you know, you get, you get a chance to, you know. You know, see guys that's been in your program for a year, right? You see Al, you see Kadari, you see Dre, you see Ja'Quan Ju- Ju- Sanders, right? You, you see guys that now are now teaching the other guys what we do. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't really do that last year because I only had one person, that was Casey, that know what I do, right? So now, it's, so now we, I think it helped us in the summertime be ahead of certain things because those guys was talking and teaching. Um, and, and, and I you know three guys are captains right now. I didn't have no captains last year. So there's a lot of di- different things that I like now at this point than last year. So you bring up a good point about captains. Yep. So what did you see in these three captains and why did you <laughs> select to have them as captains? Well, for a lot of different reasons. I think for Dre always been a guy who talked, right? Kadari and Al don't talk too much. Um, so those guys, I want to know those guys to talk and be leaders. Um, plus, also, this is kind of like they last go around, right? I want them to have a sense of urgency. Like, because when you play and you have a sense of urgency, it kind of shows. Um, plus, you know, I, I'm a firm believer in your better players have to be your leaders. Yeah. Like, um, and I tell these guys all the time, four people, there's four people in this program that cannot have a bad practice. Now, when I say a bad practice, I'm not talking about making shots, missing shots. I'm talking about energy, attitude, and doing the right things. And that's the three captains and me. We always, uh, we always got to have a positive attitude. We, we got to be upbeat. We got to be energ- energetic. If those three guys and myself are doing that, it's going to be a successful year. And to be clear, that's Kadari, Alamir, and Dre. Yes. 
Dre is a guy who I, I cannot say enough good things. Mm -hmm. about. Every coach would love to have a Dre Davis. And I think, listen, you can't go back, <laughs> right? You can't go back in time. But I think that this he has so many intangibles. If he played in that Villanova or, or Creighton game, maybe we're talking about Seton Hall in the NCAA tournament that last year, that he's that valuable of a player. Well, well, what Dre does is, he mean to you? Dre is very valuable, right? You know, Dre come, come to us from Louisville, right? Um, good coach, Chris Mack, very good coach. Um, and, you know, you know, people forget before Dre got hurt, he was our leading scorer. You know, and, and he was somebody that, you know, I'm, I'm huge with having weapons off the bench. Like if you watch my St. Peter's teams, mm -hmm. like some of my better players and some of my better scorers came off the bench. Because I feel like if the starters is not got it, the starters don't have it going, you need to bring somebody in that got it going. So he was my guy that was, had that second group going. Right? And, and at the time, I didn't have a starting five. So it didn't matter who started. To me, it matters who finished the game. Um, so at one time, like I said, he was our starting, you know, he was our leading scorer. You know, him going down for many games he went down for, and then now I'm trying to work his way back. What people understand by Dre is Dre has a tremendous drive. You know, and I don't know it's because, you know, he, he has a daughter or whatever, whatever that drive is, he has a tremendous drive. And it was, he was sick to his stomach last year and not be able to play. And it hurt us. I mean, it hurt us a lot. Think about it, he missed like, I think 10 or 11 games, but then even when he came back, he couldn't practice as much. He couldn't do as much because of what was going on with his knees. So we missed him, right? Um, so, yeah, you know, he's somebody that I'm looking forward to have an unbelievable year this year on and off the court. Now, now I want to put this out there. He's a tremendous student, honor roll student. You know, to me, I tell my guys all the time, what you do off the court is what you're going to do on the court. You know, when you mess around off the court, you're going to mess around on the court. When you focus off the court, you're going to be focused on the court. Him having a, a high GPA like that, it carries over to the basketball court. Yeah. That's why he's been the player he's been. Hard worker in the classroom, in life, yeah. uh, obviously. You know, not too many college students have babies, you know, have, have children. So Correct. good for him. So he, uh, certainly a role model. Kadari Richmond has been a player that, that, you know, so much potential. And we've seen it in glimpses, but not consistent enough. And I know you've been working hard at him, Coach. Uh, I'm sure. We can only imagine what goes on behind closed doors. <laughs> how, how, <laughs> how much have we have you seen <clears throat> progress to where you want him to be? Is he getting there? See, that's a loaded question, right? Okay. And I, I want to be fair to in, in answering that. Because one thing about me, you know, I'm gonna tell you the truth. I'm always gonna tell you the truth. I'm never gonna BS you. He's taking strides, right? Um, I think this summer was a big step for him. Right? This was his first full summer of being active, doing things since he's been in college. I understand what I'm saying yeah, to you. I do. I, I understand do. what I'm saying to you. Um, so since he's been in college, he never had a summer. He's always been injured or hurt or something was going on where now he tried to make it up in the preseason. That's why he, I think he's always got hurt because he never had a summer to build on that. This was his first full summer. So that to me, that's a step, right? Um, him being a leader, talking more, doing more, instructing more, that's a step. Mm -hmm. You know, him doing something like Cook's, like Cook's Corner, yeah, right? Yeah, I've seen those. Right? Like, and, and, and might. And this may come off where people don't understand what I'm about to say, but that goes a long way for him and for us. Him showing another side of him, that goes a long way with my young guys on the team, right? More leadership, more things. Like, he's showing a side of him that people didn't know, that he's a very lovable guy, right? He got a, that got a bad deal. People talked about him and all that. The kid's a good kid. He worked, young man, excuse me, a good young man. He works hard. Um, He's trying to prove a lot of people wrong. And I keep telling him all the time, forget proving people wrong. The only person you guys can prove it to yourself. Don't worry about what people are saying. Keep the noise out. That's not important. What's important is you doing what you're supposed to do, what you have to do to get you right. And he's taking steps. And he's taking steps. And we got some ways to go. But he's taking steps. And that's all I can ask. What is it like for you to mentor young men as a head coach? And who did you look up to when you played? that were your mentors? She's taking me back right now, huh? Um, you know, it's, it's important for me. It is, right? Because I was one of those guys. Like, so let me rewind a little bit. Sure. So there's a bunch of guys that I had on my team at St. Peter's that I recruited here before I left to go to St. Peter's. And I was here for nine years as associate coach that I recruited that we had. It was like, well, why is that kid there? Why are you there? I like giving people chances, okay. right? Because in life, somebody gave me a chance. And if people close, their, if people you know shut the door on me or you know uh, turn their back on me, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. 
So I'm, I'm one of those guys. I give chances. Um, and and, and, and I, I like it, right? Because, you know, you impact in somebody's life, right? Free all around. Yeah, it, it's all around. It's not just basketball. Yeah. It's, it's, it's everything, right? Uh, I'll tell you a quick story. So last week, no, not last week. What is it today? Today is Monday? Tuesday? Monday. Monday. Last week, Thursday, I'm in Charlotte um, recruiting. Um, I see a gentleman that, you know, I know he's connected to a gentleman that I used to coach, Javon Thomas, right? Okay. Joe, Javon Thomas it was, it was a young man that had a lot of potential, right? But he had some stuff going on outside of the court. Right? He uh, had a, a, a child at a young age, which I understand I did too as well. Yeah. Um, so he came here with a you know, transfer from Kansas State, um, had to sit out, um, and then he struggled sitting out. Right, because he never ever had to sit out from basketball his whole career. Right, that's when you know you had to sit out, which is now people just play. You know, it's different now with the transfer portal. Right. Yeah. So he struggled his first year sitting out, but he helped us in practice. Him and Garrett Gordon got Kadeem and Isaiah Whitehead ready to compete as sophomores and take us to win the Big East championship because of the way Javon competed in practice against him. So we were looking forward to him having a tremendous year the next year when Isaiah left. Right. Um, but he got in some type of trouble, right? And I remember this, you know, like it was yesterday. He got in trouble, I don't want to say what, what happened, but he got in trouble and um, they were trying to expel him from school. And I was saying, listen, forget basketball right now. That's the, this is what I told the AD at the time and the president at the time, forget basketball. Like you guys have a chance to save a young man's life. So if you kick him out of school, then, then you're doing exactly what everybody's been doing to him his whole life, all right? Maybe suspend him for a semester, whatever you need to do. He can't play basketball, but let's make sure, because he was a senior, let's make sure he graduate. Because he's gonna be in the first one in his family that graduated. I was the first one in my family to graduate, so I understand how big it is. He's gonna, he got, he got a child. He's gonna be a role model to, to his kid. Then they also give him hope that there's light there. And to the school credit, they listened, they did it. Fast forward to Friday, um, he called the, the gentleman I knew on FaceTime, and he said, Shah, thank you. Now, I haven't seen him since then. Wow. Like, you saved my life. Like, I'm, I'm at where I'm at right now in my life because you let them, like, if they would've kicked me out of school, I don't know what I would've did. Right. You know, so when you ask that question, like, stories like that Man. are important to me. Not the stories that someone's making it to the pros. That's a tremendous story. Sure. But someone's making it in life, that's what I do it for. Period. I mean, I, I, I'm welling up over here just, just thinking about that. No, because it, no, it's, it's big. It's powerful. No, it's, it's big, you know. Yeah. And, and like I said, that, you know, I haven't seen him since then. And when the first thing he said was not, you know, this, that, and this. He said, I never got a chance to say thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And once again, like, right. back then, he would never said that because he wasn't mature. He wasn't at that level. So you can see how he, how he grown, how he has grew as a young man, as a man. Now he got two kids, he understanding. Thank you, thank you, because you saved my life. You went to bat for me, now I'm at where I'm at. He called his two young kids to come to the phone. Hey, this is Uncle Shah. Yeah. Uncle Shah, blah, 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 blah. Like, but, like that is why I do it. Right. So when you ask that question, that's the reason why I'm in this game. The reason why I coach, the reason why I do what I do. Why I take my job serious. Why, you know, I coach the way I coach, the way I have the passion, the way I have a, the passion for it. It's for the young men to play, but it's also for their lives. Yeah. So, you know, um, you know, a couple of people who I play for, you know, kind of taught me that. Like, I, I go back and, you know, Christian Rennes, who's the head coach of the Patrick School right now, he, he was my assistant coach when I played at St. Pat's. Mm -hmm. You know, he's one of the guys that kind of taught me that, right? Um, and every coach I played for had a kind of, you know, some way had an impact on my life, but I just remember him because he took a special liking him to me, not as a basketball player, as a person. And that meant a lot to me. Right. Well, this story means a lot to people. And I hope, hope people out there heard that. Um, you know, the impact that you can have, that people can have on other human beings' lives. So back to basketball. Thank you for sharing that, by the way. Back to basketball. This backcourt has a lot of potential. Um, yeah. How excited are you about it? How good can it be? Okay. And then I'll follow that up. <laughs> I'm excited about it, right? I think... You know, I, 
I feel disrespected for Al and Kadari, right? When you look at them, of what they've done last year, like just from a number standpoint, you got two guys that's averaging double figures, right? Um, and then, you know, then no one's talking about them, about being one of the best backcourts in the league, right? I think I, think I got the best backcourt in the league, hands down. Now, the best backcourt in the league from the shoulders down, right? Understood. Now I got to get them from the shoulders up, I got to get them to be the best backcourt. And if they do that, this team is going to go far. Because those two guys are talented enough and good enough to carry us. And now you bring Dylan Adeyawusu in, who is he's your kind of guy. Yeah, he is. He is. But I, th I think we got a good nucleus in, in the backcourt, right? We, we, got, we got some young guys, we got some old guys. Got to try to put together. Um, you know, obviously, you got Kadar, Kadari and Al. You got Dylan. Um, Jaquan Sanders, I'm looking for like a, a, a big step up from him. I mean, he, he can really shoot, shoot the basketball. That Xavier game last mm. year proved something. You know? Yeah, but I got to get him now. He got his body in shape. He wasn't in shape last year. His body's in shape. And I got to get him to also defend. For me, you got to be able to, to defend. Right. Right. Um, we brought a freshman in, um, Isaiah Coleman. He got so much talent, a lot of potential. Top 150 player, but, top but, 125. But, but we got to pay together. Um, you know, and I just think that, you know, Malachi and, you know, we like, like I said, we got some guys that, you know, that I, we got them. We got more depth in the backcourt than we had last year. Right. Um, now we got to pair together. I need my older guy to lead, and then you kind of go from there. Right. Well, listen, there are great backcourts in there, and, and you can dispute whether it's Marquette or UConn or no, or no, Villanova no, or Seton. No, Hall. no, it's you good. Got it's good. It's, and it's great. That's why it's the Big East, it's right. the best conference in the country, right? But I just feel like my guys are the, the when you look at it as a whole, you know. But they got to prove it. Like, 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 I could talk it, I could talk it, <laughs> right. but they got to prove it. And I think that they raised it to step up. Right. So now the front court is, is a mystery, right? You lose so much in your front court and you're bringing in new Did guys. I? But, but did we really? Right. You lost Tyrese. Well, right. You lost, and, you and lost he Casey. was the front court. You lost Tyrese. Casey. You Those lost Tyrese. Pretty big pieces. Um, we, we lost other guys too, which I'm not, I don't want to disrespect nobody. Right. But the, the, so guys, the guys you brought in. The, the guys I brought in is different, right? We have more depth, we have more size. And we, got, and we can shoot the ball better. That's what my main goal was this year, to get more size, to get more depth, and, and we can shoot the ball because we couldn't shoot at all last year. Um, so we bought, you know, I got a three-headed monster with centers. I got three centers, which we didn't have last year. Um, I got three guys at the fourth spot, which we didn't have last year. All right? And they all going to complement each other. All right? They're all different. All right? You got Dre. All right? You can play some three. You can play some four for me. I'm looking for him to have a tremendous year for us. Um, we got David Tobek as a freshman, which I love. He played with tremendous energy, 6'8", athletic, can shoot the heck out of the basketball. And then you got Sada. Um, Sada was, before he got hurt, he was a top, a top 15 player in the country. All right? um, six, six, ten, can shoot threes, can put the ball on the floor. So like we got some size. Like we got some size. And then you got you know, Isaiah. I mean, excuse me, you got Elijah. You know, a local kid. Um, had two good solid years at um, you know the school. He he was at Austin P. Um, he came in, transformed his body tremendously. He could shoot the basketball from the outside at six eleven. He could play inside. Then you got J B. You know Jalen. He come from a great school. You know I think Santa Clara is a great school. He's a great coach. Mm -hmm. Great coach. Um, he knows how to play. He's a banger. He's an old school Jake Vosco type of player. You know guys that I love. Guys, you win with guys like that. Um, then we got a young. You know, Otter, a young Turkish big guy that's that's learning, that's gonna be good for us. Yeah, you got him you got yeah. him late, coach. Yeah, how, you know, how did you get him? Working, man. Okay. Just just working. You know, we just working, no, that's all, man. Just working, trying to put it together. So last question for me as we wrap up here, back to school with Shaheen Holloway. Complete this sentence. This year, Seton Hall will be a team that goes out and compete every single night, plays hard, um, gonna give it all they got. Gonna be excited to watch, excited to play. Um, I think we got we got a chance. You know, I don't I don't pick numbers on stuff. I just say this: every night you come watch us play, you're gonna say that team is giving it they all, just like they coach. Well, we know you're gonna give it their all, and we, you're all, and we know that they're gonna follow in your footsteps, coach. They got no other choice, or they ain't gonna play. <laughs> <laughs> Shane, Simple. Listen, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, it's been my great man. Great being back here on campus with you, from one alum to another. Best of luck this season, my man. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right. We're back to school here with Shaheen Holloway. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching on my YouTube channel as well. Follow us, subscribe to us wherever you get your podcast on Apple or Spotify. Until next time, 
My name is Brian DiNavellis. Thanks for listening and thanks for watching the Tri-State College Basketball Podcast.